What's up my pre-calc people? Let's talk about the AP pre-calculus exam, exactly what you're gonna see when you sit and take that exam in May. First, there are two big sections, multiple choice and free response questions. Now, in the multiple choice, there are 40 questions, but those 40 questions are broken down to two parts. Part A, 28 questions without a calculator, and Part B, 12 questions with a calculator. Now, of all those 40 questions, the breakdown is gonna be roughly like this. About 15 to 23% of the questions deal with general functions. 20 to 25% deal with polynomial and rational functions, 22 to 28% deal with exponential and logarithmic functions, and 30 to 35% deal with trigonomic and polar functions. In that first chunk of multiple choice questions dealing with general functions, we're talking about general characteristics of functions that apply to, well, all functions. Things like end behavior, increasing, decreasing concavity, rate of change, a ton of different topics that, again, really could be applied to many different things that we learned in Unit 1 and Unit 2. That next chunk focuses on polynomial and rational functions. Here we're focusing on the zeros of polynomial functions, and then we're talking about rational functions. We're looking at vertical asymptotes, horizontal asymptotes, holes, end behavior, all that good stuff as well. In that third chunk, we're focusing on exponential and logarithmic functions. We're looking at solving equations, solving inequalities, specifically understanding aspects of exponential and logarithmic graphs. And then finally, we have trigonomic and polar functions as well. Here we're looking at all those different types of things that apply to periodic functions. So again, four different chunks of types of questions dealing with multiple choice. All right, not too bad, pretty simple overall, but I will say that if you have a good understanding of the general characteristics of functions, transformations, end behavior, increasing, decreasing, concavity, you're gonna do really, really well on the exam because those things go across all the different units. But then again, there are specific questions over those specific types of functions that we've been learning about, exponential, logarithmic, rational, polynomial, and of course, trigonomic. The next section of the AP Precalculus exam is four free response questions. And here's the best news. We know exactly what each and every one of those four questions is gonna look like. We don't know exactly what functions or what modeling situation they're gonna use, but we know exactly what is going to be asked. Let's go over each of those questions right now. The first free response question covers function concepts. In this problem, you're gonna pre be presented with functions expressed graphically, numerically, and analytically. The question includes three parts and requires students to work with a variety of concepts. There may be function composition, inverse functions, function input output values, zeros of function, and behavior of function, and identification of an appropriate function type to construct a function model. Now in this section, you will be allowed to use a graphing calculator, and that graphing calculator is gonna really help make sure that you get all the values exact and perfect. Now I have a video in the ultimate review packet that walks through exactly what this problem will look like and gives you some practice for it. The second FRQ question deals with modeling a non-periodic problem. You will be able to use a graphing calculator on this problem as well. In this problem, you will be presented with a real life problem in context. In part A, students use the given information to construct a function model by building a system of equations and find the parameters using a method of choice. Function types include polynomial, piecewise defined, exponential, and logarithmic. In part B, students calculate, apply, and reason with average rates of change and their units. In part C, students justify conclusion about assumptions or limitations of the model. Again, you are allowed to use a graphing calculator to help you on this problem. Now, the problem is definitely gonna be in context to a real world scenario, and it's all about taking that aspects of that real world scenario in building a function and answering questions about it. Again, I have a separate video in the ultimate review packet that's going to walk you through a practice question just like this and show you exactly how you're going to apply all these skills and concepts. The third FRQ question is over a periodic function. Now, in this problem, you will not be able to use a calculator and it will be applied to a real world scenario. Now, in this problem, you're gonna be presented with a real life context that is modeled by a sinusoidal function. In part A, students will use the given information to identify coordinates of five label points on the graph of the sinusoidal function and its midline for two full cycles. In part B, students find the parameters of an analytical presentation of the sinusoidal function. 
Both parts A and B require students to construct the sinusoidal model by using the context to determine the vertical dilation and vertical translation of the sine or cosine function, which will affect the amplitude and vertical shift, and use the horizontal dilation and horizontal translation of the sine or cosine function, which will affect the period and phase shift. In part C, students answer questions about the behavior of the function and describe the change in the rate of change on a particular interval. Now again, you will not be able to use a calculator here, so hopefully you've done a lot of work in class, but I also have a video that covers this type of problem and how you need to work through it without a graphing calculator. Now, the fourth and final problem deals with symbolic manipulation. You will not be allowed to use a calculator on this problem, and it does not cover a real-world problem. Now, what's going to happen here is you're going to be presented with several functions, exponential, logarithmic, trigonomic, and or inverse trigonomic functions. Two parts of the question require students to solve equations using functions. The third part of the question requires students to rewrite given function expressions in equivalent forms. In this question, students must, one, determine the exact values of expressions that can be attained without a calculator, two, use algebraic methods and rules for exponential or exponents and logarithms to combine terms, and three, show the work that leads to their answers in each part for that question. Now, again, I have another video in my Ultimate Review Packet that walks through a practice problem exactly like this, so you can see how all of these different skills that you're going to be doing in this problem actually work and become really easy even when you can't use a calculator. But it's important that you know how to work with logs and exponents. You know the terms, you know the definitions, and you know all the different rules that apply to logarithmic functions. And you also got to know all of your different trigonomic identities and how you can rewrite trigonomic functions with different trigonomic functions. That's really what the big focus of this problem is on. So that's the AP pre-calculus exam. 40 multiple choice questions, 28 no calculator, 12 yes you can. Four free response, two with the calculator, two without. And again, those free response questions are very detailed, exactly what is going to be on them. So it shouldn't really be a surprise. All you need to do is practice. And well, guess what? That's exactly what the Ultimate Review Packet is going to help you do. Practice many different types of problems, just like the four that you're going to see on the free response section. All right, I hope all that makes sense. And I hope that you now know exactly what to expect on the AP exam. That way, when you open it up in May, you won't be surprised. What you will be is prepared.